So what happens when you put esports and Blender together, what, what could you do? And that's what I wanted to explore in today's video. So I'm basically gonna go over how to make something like this, which I think is really simple, it's really fun, but the fun part is I think is what you, how you how you get here, okay? These are not Google assets. We're gonna use Blender, show you guys how to import it, use reference images, use lighting, and just have a little bit of fun with Blender, just a tiny bit to make it, maybe maybe you guys get it inside your workflow, okay? So that's my second agenda. My first agenda, of course, is making that really cool esports header. So let's just hop into it. But of course, before we do that, do not forget to check out the everything pack if you guys do not know what it is all 28 of my custom made products that you get on that one purchase plus all future products free all right so let's go and hop into this thing and hopefully it should be pretty fun okay so file new we're gonna create our first dimension which is 3000 by 1000 which is the document size for a twitter header for this instance of course you can do whatever banner it is it happens to be for but this is going to be our start of course i have my assets over here so i'm going to drag in my photo asset and actually before i drag it in it's probably best for me to take my my photo asset and probably cut it out here first so that way if i scale it up or down i have to i don't have to like recut it out every time so to do that i'm going to just simply click on my actual photo just like so we're going to press w on our keyboard that brings up the quick selection tool and then this allows us to give the option to select subjects so i'm going to select that just as we go and as you can see it does a pretty good job at selecting the outside edges of the subject but if you can see these little mess ups here little mess ups over here we can quickly fix that just press q on the keyboard take your brush okay i'll make it pretty small for this though take your brush 100 percent hardness and then right here i'm gonna have uh white erase just like as you guys see and then black will fill in right so if i see black is here that's my color black i press x i'll go ahead and just change it to white and x changes my colors and i can just kind of fix this really quick and then pretty much when my selection is all good in my uh, my opinion i'm gonna press q again to deselect this sort of uh quick mask mode select on my photo make sure it's selected click on the little layer mask down here and it should automatically cut it out so now i can place it inside of my new dimension here and i think that's a good start nice little fns just like so i'm gonna go ahead and take the other uh little logo here to so see us on energy I want to go over and put over here and just because i like to i'll throw in all the text now so i'm gonna do a little a little bit of like a subtext thing okay i'm gonna put like esports header obviously you might put like professional esports player valorant or whatever the game mode it is maybe like est 2023 since you've been pro things like that okay of course though i'm not going to choose to use a display or a heading font you can see this is a display or a heading font i'm going to use a sans serif font which is going to be something maybe like what would you guys have like an aerial Arial's good okay watch this Okay, Arial, don't sleep on it. I'm gonna go ahead and use Arial uh, regular for this, why not? Okay, so I ended up putting Professional Valorant Player Esports Champion Series FNS, and this can basically be, like I said, it's basically just a bunch of whatever you feel like. So at this point, we're definitely not in Blender just yet, but let me just drag in some different texture elements that can help us out. Now, obviously, I'm gonna use textures that I, of course, produce myself. You guys can find these kind of textures by typing in like noise texture in Google, or grunge texture, or just textures in general, or you can click the first link in the description down below and get the everything pack. Just saying. So for this, I'm gonna take take an area. I'm gonna go say this is pretty decent. I'm gonna use a little bit of a Control U on my keyboard to bring up the hue and saturation table while I'm selected on this layer, which allows me to change my color, my lightness, and all that good stuff. I'm basically gonna just take my lightness, lower this down just a little bit. I also want to go into it and use my double click layer styles, right? Blending options under my current layer. I'm gonna hold Alt, split this layer, and just like so, split this. That way, this smoke is not so thick and like uh, it's more transparent. This will help me out here, just like so. And then maybe I'm gonna go over here and add in a little bit of a curve. Right click this curve and do a nice little create clip mask. And I'll just make a nice little curve, just like so. Again, to make it less visible in a sense. Hopefully, you guys, if you have like a really like a shitty monitor, okay, you're not going to see this. That's your cue to get a new monitor. So from here, I'm actually going to go and just add one more little texture to this for now. And this is going to be a nice little noise texture here. And for me, the first sort of three options that I choose first is color dodge, linear dodge, add, and so oh, soft light are my, my three favorite blending modes that I use. So I would say color dodge, this might be at my favorite. I would say so. I'm going to take the opacity lower to about 45%. And make sure this is only on top of our little smoke here, right? We're going to take our player and all this other tech stuff, bring this all the way up here. We don't want the texture to kind of hit any of the other stuff below or above, excuse me, just yet. So that's what I'm going to have right there. You can see the texture looks really nice. It's very subtle. It just adds a nice little atmosphere to it. I'm also just going to go ahead and just take this now and just make sure this is like a nicer, like, yeah, something like this. You feel me? Now we're going to take this 
and bring it into Blender and uh, just give it a little something, okay? So before I actually hop into that, I'm gonna go ahead and go to where it says File, Export, Save for Web, and I'm gonna basically save this image just so I can have a reference image inside of Blender. So given the fact that my eSports header currently is designed for a Valorant player, I'm gonna basically try to look for Valorant models. Now, I do have a Valorant models drive from Rockland's Valorant 3D model pack, and this is just a free little drive that he basically put together for us. And this is what I'm personally gonna use, but let me just say something like this, right? Like if you're just, if you're, let's say you just want bullets flying around, okay? I think the person, the best place to get free models that I've been personally using is Sketchfab, and it's not a sponsor, trust me. But if we were to basically hop on the site for a second, we just want to say like, yo, I want like a bullet flying around my person. Uh, you can just place type in bullet, do downloadable, and then just basically scroll until you see this little download button. If it is a, uh, what you would call it, like a like a dollar sign, you can't, you don't want to buy it. That's probably, you know, don't click on that one. But it's a, if it's a bullet, you like it, you click on it, right? And you just download the 3D model down here, right? My favorite files personally is probably FBX, STL, and then like blend file. Uh, so this one has FBX, so I can just basically grab this and do the exact same thing I'm gonna do inside of Blender right now. Uh, besides that though, I'm gonna use just some regular agent gun thing, just because I felt like I wanted it to be more themed towards the game itself. So I just went ahead and downloaded these four different Killjoy and Ray's grenade assets just because I felt like it was cool and I just want to use that. So allow me to start with what you guys are going to be inside of most likely. Okay, so we're going to have a cube. I'm going to press X and delete that. We're going to have a camera. You can click on over here as well, but I'm going to press X and delete that too. And then we're going to have a light. I'm going to click on that, press X and delete that as well. So I'm going to have a nice little frame just for S. Now, the immediate first thing I'm going to personally do is I want to go ahead and just press a little bit of a shift A, go to image and then do reference. This is gonna basically find my folder here and select on my header example that I have here and press load reference image. And just like, so we're gonna probably have a little be a little crooked. I can just go over here, this little, this little very, very hard to see arrow. You wanna click on that, open that, take my exhortation, put it at about 90. And then immediately you're gonna see it's basically nice and straight now. So I can kind of just kind of put this where I need to put it. It's more straight and I have an actual reference of my header inside of here so I can kind of center things and place things the exact way that I would personally want it to be. So the first thing I might do is I'm gonna open up the raised blender uh, blender file that I have here. And now that I'm here, I can just basically select it just like so, move it around just to make sure I have it selected, press control C, and I can go back into my reference image over here and then literally just press control V inside of it, right? You can see it's nice and small down here. So I'm gonna press S on my keyboard for scale, make it a little more bigger bring it up a little bit. And the first thing you might also say is like, Sesso, it's, it doesn't have the color and it does. All you have to do over here on the top right is your render views. You have like your shaded, like semi render view and then you have your full render view and like the highest quality possible, uh, your viewport render. So I'm gonna click on this little second to last one here to kind of make sure my, um, I can move around quick enough, okay? Also, you might notice when it comes with your render, your object itself, you have these little black floating lines. These are like skeletal meshes, things like that. You can just kind of delete those. It might reset where you kind of put your nade before or whatever object you end up putting in there. And that's okay, you can just move it back just like so. And I'll just go ahead and just use a little rotation tool and kind of rotate this any way I need to rotate it right now. I'm gonna basically kind of just move it around till I find a nice simple spot. I would say this is pretty good. You can also press RR on your keyboard to rotate it like freehand like this, but it's a little hard to control, but I'm gonna say that's pretty decent. I'll use my scale tool here, make it a little bit bigger. Then I'll go ahead and bring in the boom bot and the same thing here. I can also just kind of select immediately these little black uh, lines here, delete that. And I'll just press control C on the actual boom bot, go back to my working file and press control V to paste it. C or S, excuse me, to scale it. And then I'll move it over here as well and move this accordingly. And then lastly, I have one more asset in here. And again, these can be anything you guys basically want or find. Um, I'm just I'm just using Valent related characters or in uh, weapons just because it's just, it's just simple. And I think this is pretty good to go. So now that I have this here, I need to make sure I set up the scene. Cause I've of course tried to render this out. It's gonna be really, really dark, really, really black, but I can show you guys how to fix that really easily. So the first thing I'm gonna do, shift A, we're just gonna add in a nice little sun, just like so so shift a light and add sun and this little thing right here is the sun so i bring this all the way up i'll take the sun and one is probably going to be good enough uh because i also know that i'm going to put it on two for a second but the strength is right here one or two you can see already it starts to add a little bit of light just like so but it's also a little bit too like it's just not there and the way you actually combat this you want to go to somewhere known as hdr haven again not a sponsor but this is basically an hdri that you're going to put hdri that you're gonna put inside the actual scene to actually kind of 
add a, a, an environment light, okay? So any of these, you can go through all of these. You can just basically use like an indoor one or studio one is the ones I personally like to use in this instance. And then you just want to select on it and then just download the HDRI map. And then we can go back into Blender. And when you guys are here, okay, I want to take the timeline, move this up on the far, far left. This is where we're going to switch my view into shader editor. Then I'm going to click on object and select on world. Okay. And then here I'm going to zoom in and we're going to do shift a again, click on search and I'm going to do environment texture. Boom. And then right here, I'm going to just kind of immediately take this color, clip it to the other color. And then your scene should basically turn pink. That's how you know you're in the good. You, you're doing right. You're doing right so far. Okay. Then you want to go to open and go to your downloads folder and basically find your HDRI by just typing in HDR in the search bar. And then I'm just going to click on my studio one, which I think is right here. Small room. Sure. Open image. And then immediately you basically can see the actual render should be a lot more visible, a lot better quality looking, and you can kind of see some detail and it looks like there's actually a light in the scene, okay? I'm gonna go over here to my camera. Oh, I didn't I don't even have a camera. Let's go, let's open a camera really quick. So let me quickly bring in a camera, okay? Shift A once again, go to camera. And then right here, if you guys are on keyboard and uh, of course, maybe obviously you're on keyboard and mouse, okay? But if you guys do not have a numpad, which I personally do not, I have a 6% keyboard, make sure you go to edit, preferences, input, and make sure you select emulate numpad. This will allow you guys to do some shortcuts that a lot of people, of course, use in Blender, but if you guys wanna have a numpad, you can't do it, okay? So the numpad shortcut to basically like, like set your view with the camera view is control alt zero. Okay, that's to set this view. You can see this little box outline here is just indicating and saying, hey, your camera right here is gonna look at this. It's gonna render this part out. So with that being known, okay, I'm gonna go to my resolution. I'm gonna take this, put this at 3000. Right. And then 1000 for my Y, because this is basically a what you would call it. This is a, this is the, the right dimensions. So once I've done this, it might not be perfectly in frame just yet. We can fix that in a second. But I want to really quickly go up to the top one right here. This the actual scene settings. Go to my render engine and click on cycles. Then I want to click on device and do GPU commute or compute. Excuse me. This basically allows that you render with your GPU as well. And I believe there's a setting you might have to attach as well. I think it's under edit preferences system. And then you want to make sure you're on optic X or optics, right? You want to have your uh, graphics card selected and your CPU selected as well. So now that we're here, I can go to my camera settings now, right? And I'm going to basically just take this. I'm going to go to the camera drop down, take my size and zoom this out just enough so I can actually have my stuff inside of it. I'll take my shift X make sure I center this right, my shift Y, make sure I center this like this. And that feels pretty good. So now really quickly, what I'm gonna have to do, okay, if I were to render this out, I'm gonna see this background, which I don't want to see the background, okay? I wanna go to my render settings again. Go ahead and go to drop down under film, and I'm gonna choose where it says transparent, and this will make my scene transparent, so that way I don't actually have to see it, okay? And then lastly, I also wanna go over here to performance, so I do have a decent GPU, which I think most of you guys, if you guys are probably in esports, you might have a decent computer because you game. I'm gonna take use tiling, tick this off. This will basically make it so that you're not kind of rendering little boxes when you guys click render image, like at a time. It's gonna render the entire image at once, and if your GPU is good enough, you should be okay. So once I actually have this all set and done, I can click on my little uh, image reference here and make sure I just toggle off this camera, toggle off this eye. Also make sure under my actual, uh, where is it at? Render settings once more, once more, okay? One more thing, make sure you guys are under render. We're gonna take this sa samples and put it up to like 2000. Honestly, 800 might be very much so enough. I just like 2000. And I also wanna like sh uh, make sure I have denoise checked as well. And then to basically go ahead and start this render, you wanna click on the top left, click on render, render image. And then we're just gonna wait a, a few seconds, hopefully. And honestly, that was about 20 seconds. So with that being said, I can go over where it says image and I wanna do save uh, a copy. Under save a copy, I'm gonna basically just save this as like a uh, header stuff. Of course, you want to make sure RG plus alpha is selected and I'm going to press save image. So now I can take my image, drag it in here, and make it nice and big as I would need to. Okay. And I, I might have to move this little uh, guy a little bit further. So what you just, what I just did for, for the record, I just basically clicked on this little smart object layer, opens up the object for me. I'm going to basically highlight this with the lasso tool, cut it out, move it over, combine these two layers together by selecting them with control. Okay and then control shift E to merge the layers together again, and then control S to go ahead and save the file. And that will basically just let me go back over here and now it's moved for myself, okay? And then from here, we're gonna go to where it says a little adjustments layer, gradient map, clip mask this gradient map. I'm gonna, I'm using just a nice little simple black to white gradient map. And you can see my far, far left node here is pure black. And then my far right node, I might tweak this a little bit to like be a little bit more gray, something like over here. But you see, I'm, I'm losing a lot of detail. It's not too gray. Something like this I think is pretty good. So I'm gonna go take this now, move this just like so. I feel like that's pretty good. And I'm gonna take this smoke layer and drag this above these as well. 
and I'm gonna take this layer, make it a little bit bigger, move it just around a little bit so it's not like a, a completely the same exact one. And this will just add some depth between the actual background and the actual like little objects you have. And then like a little more foreground uh, smoke to just, you know, add some atmosphere. So I'm gonna add a little layer style, take my brush and kind of erase in a few spots just so it's not like completely everywhere. Then I'm just gonna basically take my FNS word over here, drag another copy. So I'm gonna hold Alt, drag it below this player, right? Bring it over here. I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger just for some added texture. Now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer above this new smoke layer. I'm gonna take my brush, take the uh, take the color black, okay? I'm just gonna use a nice little lower opacity brush around like 40% or so. I'm just gonna click a few times in these little areas just to kind of add a little bit more depth and just so it's not so like out there, right? So this will kind of help me out like blending it into the background. Same thing over here on this side. I feel like it feels nice. What I'm actually gonna do as well, I'm gonna go back into this one more time. I'm gonna cut this out first. I'm gonna lay it via copy, control C this layer. I'll just go back outside of it, okay? I'm gonna basically control V this above everything. I want to take this color here because I feel like it's orange. I feel like it's going to pop out a little bit. I'm gonna, I'll bring it above this little uh, FNS uh, additional text here. I'll move it over here. I'll put it over here as well. And this just kind of helps us bring in a little bit of color. Of course, whatever your object ends up being, it's just a little bit of color. So it's not completely black and white. But besides that, we can, of course, do a little bit of lighting on this actual player and add some lighting to the back to actually finalize this thing. So first, I'll just really quickly color correct this player. OK, so I'm going to select on the layer itself. Go to filter, go to camera raw filter. And in this, we're going to basically use the little color correction. So I'm going to take this little layer down here or button down here. Excuse me, this little square. This will be giving me a before and after. So I can kind of zoom in, go to my light. I'll take my shadows, bring it up a little bit. Take my blacks, lower them down. Whites, I'll put it up a little bit. Effects is my favorite. My texture, put it up. Clarity, put just a little bit up. Not too crazy. A little bit of detail under sharpening. I'm going to bring this up as well. And I think this feels good. I might do a little bit of exposure as well. We can also go into the actual image itself. So click on the actual uh, little little smart object layer. We're going to go press G or J, excuse me, on our keyboard and go into any little areas and kind of move them with this patch tool. So this patch tool right here, we're going to select some areas that just feels like there's a little acne on it or something like that. Um, we just want to kind of cl click hover over it get rid of it so his skin is really smooth right i mean who wants to have a zoomed in face with like imperfections on them right you know just fix it now what i'll do is i'll make a new layer right below the layer of uh the photo again with this new layer i'm gonna take my take my color and make it my team color or whatever color you want to stand out maybe you have like a green object and like a purple object maybe you can use both those colors or choose one of those colors right i'm gonna take my uh, brush opacity put it up back up to 100 on my orange brush i'm gonna click it just click a few times just like so maybe like a little bit further out that kind of bleeds toward the end of the actual header and a few times i clicked about three times i'll make a new layer take my color this time and choose a little bit of a lighter tone color and then drag this thing down just like so to get a, a darker muddier tone click just like so in the middle maybe like twice then i'm gonna go to uh, my normal blend mode and put it on linear dodge add and then from here i can press Control u on my keyboard this will allow me to kind of change my color uh manually after i already selected and, and applied the colors or the light excuse me so i can take my lightness i can put it up if i want to my saturation i can put it up and then move the hue if i need to as well to change the color or the tone so i'll say this is pretty good maybe take my eraser lower the opacity down a little bit kind of click and delete around this name portion maybe it doesn't have to float too far over here as well so now what i'll really quickly do is i'll just add a little bit of rim light okay so the rim light i'm going to click on the layer itself this photo layer make a new layer so it's above it right click clip mask this layer and i've done this so many times so i'm going to go and speed run this one but i'm going to use 100 percent harness brush make it really 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 small take the orange color here make it a little bit lighter then just take this layer and i'll just hold shift to make a straight line and give this a nice little uh rim light just at the tip not too far and we're not going like this right just the tip of the brush kind of hovers around these little areas right here where the light would hit so it definitely hit right here and then what i'll do is on a new layer i'm going to change this one or clip mask this one as well on this new layer and i'll use a different blend mode so not normal but linear dodge add this time it's like the orange it's like the nice little darkish orange that's like somewhere around the canvas or just like choose a darker color of the highlight that you just use take your brush a nice bigger brush i would say the uh, the opacity we can do it like 70 percent so a bigger brush don't click like this but just use the edge of the brush and click around it just like so 
just around the areas that the light would hit. So I would say the light wouldn't like hit too much here. And then what I'll do is add one more layer and I'll just choose a nice color again. So I'm going to choose a darker tone, a darker color, put this further down, linear dodge, add one more time. And I'll use a 100% harness brush and just really click around that area where the light should be hitting. But if I zoom out, it feels pretty good. And then one more new layer. OK, so you're going to have four layers in total for this lighting. And we're going to take a nice brush. You can use the same exact color that you used last time to kind of the finalize hit. I'm going to click one time right in the middle here. Linear dodge, add one more time and make this a little bit bigger. This is more like an ambience light. I wouldn't call this like a lighting effect light. This is just more like a make it feel good light, right? So I'm going to kind of turn this on and off to kind of feel like where I feel like I need to erase it. So some of you on his face a little bit more, right? And I feel like it's a little bit too orange. I'll control you, make it a tiny bit more yellow. So I'm moving towards the right, right? Plus six makes a big difference for me. I'm gonna press okay. And I feel like that looks pretty good. So for just a quick little tip on like color, uh, color harmony here, this white right here feels good, right? It's white, it's very easy to see, but I have this really cool blue tone over here. I'm actually gonna select my FNS, click on my little uh, characters table and choose this blue instead, right? I can probably make it a little less uh, blue though. I might have to make it like a little farther up here. But just a little color harmony, this feels really nice. I'll do the same thing with this over here as well. And I also do have a few more stocks. Where are they at? This little layer right here, actually. So I'm gonna drag this in as well. I'm gonna move it somewhere that I kind of like, and I'm gonna change the blend mode again, of course, to something like screen feels pretty good. Right here, I'm gonna take this. I think this looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and just use a curve though. Clip mask this to it as well. And on this curve adjustment, I'm gonna kind of move this a little bit, just so I get a little bit less. You can see how the stringing of it, if I bring this down, It'll make it a little bit less. Take my brush and a few of these little areas like so, just so it's not like completely out there and it's more like a nice texture environment kind of moment. And I feel like from here, all we have to do over here is now press, uh, click on the top layer, Control, Alt, Shift, and E will merge all the layers together, plus make it a new layer itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make it a smart object as well. Do a nice little final color correction with a camera raw filter. Okay, and then from here, before and after photo, and then from here, I can make very, very small adjustments. I can take my blacks, make it a little more lower, take my shadows, bring it up a little bit. Never can do it without a little more sharpening. I just kind of, I'm a big fan right now, sharpen. A little bit of texture as well, why not hurt no one? And then at this point, so you can also color mix sure if you guys want to change the hue entirely of the header itself. I wouldn't recommend it. Oranges and reds, if I gotta stick away from, cause that's like skin tone colors. But if you had like blues or greens, it could be cool to kind of flirt with that and see what happens. Like this blue over here is changing the blue of this right here, which also in turn will change the blue of this. So you can kind of see it. You can you can have some fun with it if you guys wish to. Uh, but from there, I'm gonna press OK, and then this is now gonna be my final header. And the way I'm gonna export this, just so you guys, just so you guys know, okay, is file, export, save for web. And I personally like to use JPEG at 100% opacity. And I'll press save, and I'll be good to go to put it on my Twitter header or my X header, however you guys see it. It's definitely Twitter though. Obviously, I haven't done a banner tour in a very very long time. I haven't used Blender very often, but I wanted to kind of, or I use Blender often now, but I haven't made a tutorial on it very often. The last one I did, you guys really enjoyed. So I wanted to see if I just kind of put them together and you guys can have some fun and learn the old fashioned with some banner design. So hopefully, you guys learned something. Uh, hopefully, you guys feel more comfortable navigating uh, Blender if it's something that you're not really used to. Hopefully, you pick up the Everything Pack, the first thing in the description down below. You get all my assets plus all future ones for free. It's a W. But that being said, Cisco HQ out. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking proud of guys. I much love peace and enjoy your days. I, I feel like I feel like we did something here, and hopefully, you guys have fun learning along the way. Later.